Imagine a drop of water landing right where you are. When it hits the ground, where is it going to flow? Even if you're on concrete, it flows through the path of least resistance to a ditch, a stream of some sort. And so you are part of that watershed. My name's Megan Burgess, and I'm the District Conservationist with the Natural Resources Conservation Service in Kenton, Ohio. We are located in Northwest Ohio. The watershed that we're in all drains eventually into the Maumee River, which empties into the western basin of Lake Erie. Conservation practices can be applied on many different farm types here within the western Lake Erie Basin. And so knowing what you're doing on your ground is important for your entire community. I'm Bill Kellogg. We run 5,000 acres here in Hardin and Wyandotte County. We raise corn, beans, and some wheat. I'm joined today by my son, Shane. We work together all the time. I'm the sixth generation in the family that's on this farm. Shane is seventh, and hopefully one of my six grandkids will take hold of it and be the eighth generation on the farm. I drove for combine. The larger producers are usually the ones that are put under the microscope to look at what we're doing and how we're doing it. And if we can get the word out there that conservation is somewhat a state of mind, that you have to want to do it. There's some things that we do that takes a lot of resources and management skills. Radishes are a very common uh, cover crop that we use. And you explained to me the nutrients that it will take out of the ground, and then when it decomposes next spring, those nutrients will come back available to the crop. At Kellogg Farms, some of the conservation practices that they are working on are cover crops, improving their conservation crop rotation, placing their nutrients below the soil surface. This is where we've stripped till. We're not putting more fertilizer out there than we need to. We're putting it in a narrow band, and we'll cut our fertilizer costs by a third. And up here, we have a filter strip that helps filter the water through a sponge before it reaches the creek. If you're 120 feet up there where you're putting nutrients and stuff on, you have all this area to keep it where it's supposed to instead of going into our water. Our conservation efforts, you know, started 25 years ago probably with some waterways and containment on fertilizer. Then when the Toledo water crisis happened in 2014, we knew there was going to be a backlash over it towards agriculture. And there was 500,000 people that didn't have drinking water for, I believe it was two or three days. And it was eye-opening to everybody. You know, the water was greenish colored, a lot of algae bloom and stuff like that. and. Uh, it didn't take much at all to realize there was a problem up there. Agriculture does bear some of the responsibility, but we knew if we weren't proactive to try to help solve the problem, that there would be a certain time that everything that we'd done was mandated to us. It's good to rotate which types of cover crops you use. Back in 2014, I had to go a few days without any drinkable water. And the summer I went fishing out on Lake Erie with my son, and you know, the algae bloom was there, just as big as ever. Um, would like to see us make it better. My name is Chris Kurt. This is Kurt Farms in Hardin County, Ohio. These are the water testing stations that were installed as part of USDA's testing. It tests all the surface water that comes off of our field for nutrients that might be caught up in the water as it flows off the field. We decided to participate in all these different programs for a whole host of reasons. 
There's obviously the water quality issue that we've got in Lake Erie and the Maumee watershed. Um, from an economic standpoint, I want to know what's going to keep my nutrients in the field. Because if the more nutrients that stay in the field, the less I have to apply in the future, hopefully the more money that gets put back in my pocket. What we have here is a two-stage ditch. So basically, we took a traditional V-shaped ditch, drug the sides back, and created benches. They have vegetation growing on them, so during high water events, the water flows over those benches, and hopefully are filling out the nutrients coming off the field. A lot of these practices have been around for generations. So this is a drainage control structure. Well, I'm, not, I'm not the first person to put in a filter strip. I'm not the first person to put a drainage control structure in. But with the help of this testing, we're going to find out some good solid data, some solid facts that are going to tell us, OK, this practice keeps phosphorus in the field. This practice doesn't. NRCS Ohio helped lead the charge to bring targeted funding to the watershed. So although farmers in the area were already doing a lot of these conservation practices, it helped provide financial support and encouragement to additional farmers. After Toledo, we got a lot more interest in nutrient management. The particular farm we're at right now, my great-grandfather bought the place in 1875. We have uh, 7,200 head of hogs, and we raise the pigs from weaning on up to finish. I'm Dwayne Statler. I am a farmer from Northwest Ohio. Not every neighbor has hogs. Very little livestock here anymore. Uh, but we looked at it as a diversification for us in order to bring Anthony back home onto the farm full time. I'm Anthony Stiller from Northwest Ohio, and I'm Dwayne's son. So this is the Ag Leader system that we've got, and this is integrated into the manure tank. Technology today has allowed us to minimize the inputs that we're putting in. That is, in return, better for the environment. We raise corn, beans, and wheat. This colder here goes in, and it's disrupting and fracturing the ground. And then manure comes down through this tube here, right down into the trench. And then this is a closing wheel, which takes loose dirt and sort of folds it up on top. One of the conservation practices that statelers are using is they are actually injecting their manure into the ground as they apply it, which helps keep it in place, doesn't allow it to run into the local waterways, and also helps reduce odor for their neighbors. The ground absorbs it up, and in about an hour afterwards, you can drive right on it, and you don't even realize you put any manure on. The idea came that we needed to do something to preserve our ground and, and have something for the wildlife. So we thought the best thing to do is just to turn this area into a wetland. Around the big pond there, then, we'll be able to have some shrubs and stuff for the wildlife. Once the wetlands get up, I mean, it will be a nice centerpiece for us to say, OK, there's other ways to be able to go about, you know, conservation. The great thing about a conservation system, like we've seen on these farms today, is that not only are we helping improve the water quality and what's leaving the farm, but the practices also play a significant role in the soil health on those farms. And by doing that, we're allowing those farms to be sustainable for generations to come.